Using a thin 11 16 inch wrench to hold the retaining nut in place, unscrew the hose from the valve spindle. Unscrew the cover assembly from the case. If the cover is stuck in place, a long pin face spanner can be engaged in the spokes, but care must be taken lest the pin skip and scratch the cover. Maintain firm downward pressure on the tool. Lift out the cover and diaphragm cover. Use a blunt brass spade to loosen the rim of the diaphragm before attempting to pull it from the case. After a long service interval, it may be stuck in place and may tear without loosening. Loosen, but do not remove the retaining nut. Give the valve spindle assembly a sharp tap to break it free from the case. Keeping the retaining nut in place during this maneuver prevents damage to the tips of the lever, which might otherwise strike the case rim as a stuck valve spindle breaks free. Now carefully remove the retaining nut, depress the lever, and grasping the Venturi lever, slide the valve spindle assembly out of the case. Keep control of the lever. If it has not already fallen free, remove the case o-ring from its groove. Depress the lever and slide the Venturi lever over the top and off the valve spindle. Remove its o-ring. Rotate the adjusting screw one quarter to one half turn clockwise, which will untrap the pin. Holding the valve spindle firmly, press against the pin with a large hex key until the pin's end is flush with the valve spindle. Then, using a 1 inch hex key, push the pin from the spindle. This roll pin is captured quite firmly, and it is important to maintain control of the valve spindle to avoid scratching the finish. Unscrew the adjusting screw fully and remove it from the spindle. Remove the rubber cap with a blunt spade, and with a 3 16 inch hex key, unscrew the adjusting spring at least five full turns to disengage the fine threads. Once it is loose, it will not fall out due to the friction of its sealing O-ring. Instead, press firmly with a 1 16th hex key against the tip to dislodge the adjusting spring, but take care to not damage the plastic tip. To remove the shuttle valve assembly, Lift the lever past vertical and displace it to the top of the square brooch in the valve spindle. Using a thin dowel from the threaded end, attempt to push the shuttle valve assembly from the valve spindle. If you meet resistance when pushing from the threaded end, do not risk damage to the shuttle valve and lever. To minimize the risk of bending the legs during lever removal as recommended in the service manual, consider this alternative. Thread the zip tie from the service kit up between the valve spindle and the lever. Form a bow and thread it back down the other side of the spindle, again inside the lever. Fold the lever flat and slide the zip tie against the lever feet. The lever legs are now spread approximately one millimeter on each side. Simply tilt the valve spindle and the shuttle valve assembly will slide out. Remove the zip tie and set it aside for reassembly. Removing the lever should be a last resort as there is significant risk of permanently bending the legs, which must remain parallel for proper valve function. Unscrew the orifice at least seven turns using a slotted orifice adjusting tool 
or your inline adjuster. Because of the friction of its sealing O-ring, the orifice will not fall free. Instead, carefully push it from the valve spindle using a 3 16th inch wooden dowel threaded between the feet of the lever. If the dowel cannot be advanced, it has caught on a lever foot. In this case, simply reinsert it, recenter it, and try again. Take care to keep the orifice away from all other metal parts. Do not use a metal tool to remove the orifice. Its knife edge is extremely delicate and any scratch will result in free flow. Using a thin pick, remove the o-ring from the orifice. Using a heavy plastic pick, remove the o-ring from the knob end of the valve spindle. Do not use a metal pick, which will scratch the land. Pry the o-ring inward, hook it, and pull it free. Remove the o-ring from the outer land in the valve spindle with a thin pick. Remove the low pressure seat with a fingernail. Disassemble the balanced cylinder and spring and carefully remove the tiny O-rings with a thin pick. Do not dig at the shaft of the shuttle valve with a sharp tool. Remove the O-ring from the adjusting spring and carefully remove the tiny o-ring from the shaft. Remove the o-ring from the adjusting screw. Account for all o-rings and set them aside. Inspect the orifice by gently rotating it against a fingernail feeling for nicks or irregularities which may result in free flow. Using side cutting shears, carefully cut the zip tie holding the mouthpiece at the square lock. Peel off the mouthpiece and inspect it for cuts, tears, or other damage. Removal of the exhaust valve cover is perhaps the most delicate step in disassembly. Using a stubby slotted screwdriver, place its tip carefully against the tab. Bracing the tool against your palm with your thumb and middle finger braced against the case, carefully press in and back on the tab no more than one millimeter. If the cover does not pop free, reassess the direction of your pressure against the tab. It should take no more than one half to one millimeter of tab movement to release. Remove the cover and inspect the tab for damage. Inspect the exhaust valve leaflets for damage or irregularity and the sealing surface beneath it for debris which can be removed during cleaning. This valve is not routinely replaced during service. This completes disassembly of the gear's extra second stage. Dive Gear Express videos are made available for educational purposes only, to provide general understanding of scuba diving related topics and not to provide specific advice. Please read the essential information page at the URL shown.